Hi, this is Lizard Boy here again with my Brill Altair 8800 Micro um, uh, kit. This is a not quite a replica, more like a hardware emulator of the original Altair 8800 microcomputer. If you watched my last video, you'll know that I had a problem uh, reading from the SD card. I've now resolved that. Um, it turned out that I made a pretty bad job of soldering on the SD card slot. The SD card slot is a, a surface mount component. It was the first time I'd ever soldered in anything like that. And uh, I'd managed to burn some traces and, and make a pretty bad job of it. So I've repaired the damage that I made. It's not pretty, but it does work. We'll see if I can focus on that so you can see what I'm talking about. There we go. Uh, you can probably see a red wire running from one of the traces. Um, yeah, bit of a hash job, but it does now work. I've also used another SD card. This is a 16 gigabyte SD card, which, uh, to be honest, is a bit ridiculous when it's plugged into a machine with only 32 kilobytes of memory. That's a replica of a machine that only had 256 bytes of memory as standard. So here we are with my trusty IBM Model M keyboard. This is actually a spare. The one that I used first time around turned out that it didn't work, which is a bit of a shame. So that's going to be a repair job for another day. And here's the VGA monitor. So I'm about to uh, turn this on. I know that it works. I have tested it, um, and we're about to see how it goes. So you'll notice that the address Switches are all in the down position apart from switch 11. And I also have the auxiliary switch up. All of the other switches are down. When I power this on, we should see, after a short test, we should see the int light light up. And then we should see uh, the terminal messages appearing on the VGA monitor. Here we go. So there's an LED test, there's the int light on, looking at the monitor, hoping that it's going to focus. It's asking for a file name to load, so I'm going to go for 8kbass.bin. This is 8k basic. We now see it's asking for, let me see if I can get this clearer for you. It asks for a start address, I'm just going to accept the default. And while it's loading, you can actually see the LEDs flashing as it dumps data into memory. So that's quite cool. I really like that feature. Well, yes, a design feature, I suppose. Now ask me for memory size, just accepting the default there. Terminal width, accepting the default. And it asks me if I want sine, cosine, tan, and arc tan. I will say yes. So there we go. Copyright 1976 by Mitz Inc. Man, Ed Roberts was a fucking genius. All right, here we go. Control F1. That boots into, or skips into the um, terminal ROM, which lets me load a program. So that isn't part of the original Altair. This is part of, uh, part of this kit. It lets me input a text file as a basic program. So I'm going to end sine wave dot bass and as this loads you'll see that it's actually the terminal dumping the text file directly into the uh, into the machine so just like last time the LEDs are flashing there operation complete and we get to R U N run the program there we go so here it is a fully functioning, flickering, larger than life, well actually smaller than the original Brill Altair 8800 Micro. Thanks for watching.